Destiny, Out of the Wild, a novella by J.A. Parry Bruce. Chapter 7 Pain. I moan. Put my hand on my stomach. Try to sit up. Can't. Lie back down. Take it easy. I hear a gentle voice nearby. Strange sounding. You need to rest. I look around. My vision blurs, but I see the ghost floating a few feet away from me. I try to talk, but can't get the words out. Fixed? I manage. Yes. What do you think? The ghost spins in the air. Its little eye darts this way and that. It looks nervous. Nice, I slur. W what happened? The ghost dances back and forth. It can't sit still. Fortunately, Lycus knew a guy. A frame, actually. Delighted in telling me how he fixed me. Had to try real hard to get him to shut up, actually. Lucky Lycus had just enough light left or it wouldn't have worked. I die? I ask, unsure if I want to know the answer. You were close. The ghost comes towards me, eye flicking back and forth, up and down, scanning me. I managed to pull you back. Or we did, anyhow. Light? Han? Oh yes, a few motes, but it was more than enough. His last. The ghost's voice is distant, almost sad. Thank you, it whispers. For saving me, it spins, looks at the door. Someone's coming. Like us? I knock. They don't wait for a response. Just open the door. It's like us, pillow just behind him, and something else. A metal skeleton with a cylindrical head and six-fingered hands. I sit up and shuffle back on the bed, away from them. Pain gnaws at my gut, again. You're awake, like us says. Looks like it worked. He looks back at the metal man and nods. It nods back. As I said, sir, while the ghost AI core and power source remain a mystery, it was a simple matter to repair such servos and... Lycus holds up a hand and the thing stops talking. He looks at me, leans over to look into my face, gestures to the metal man. That's Janus, he says. Pila was smiling. He's what we call a frame. Janus 1010 at your service. The frame bows. I hear joints creak quietly. It stands and brings its slender fingers together with brittle clicking sounds. While I am no stranger to repairing machines, I've never seen anything like what that ghost did to you. What did it do? I struggle to form the words, but they seem to understand. Pillow comes forwards. It saved you. You were nearly dead. I can see tiny tears forming in the corners of his eyes. He swipes him away with his hand, sniffs, doesn't stop smiling. How, I ask. Lycus shakes his head. It's hard to explain, he says. The ghost flits around the room, scanning each of us in turn. It hovers close to me. You're a creature of the light. Its eye flashes. I was able to use your own light to save you, coax it out and multiply it. That's my purpose. We find the ones whose light is brightest and help them make it brighter. It turns to look at Lycus, back to me. Your friend here, helped me. Lycus is staring at the ghost. His eyes are hard and I get the feeling that he doesn't like it, doesn't trust it. Can you give me a minute alone with her? He looks at the others. Janus turns and leaves without a word. Pilo reaches over, touches my hand before he goes. The ghost stays put. You too. Lycus points at it. The ghost seems to hesitate. Then even without shoulders, it manages to shrug. It turns to me. I'm right outside. Its eye goes dark, then brightens again. It's winking. I watch it leave, barely missing Lycus's head. What's wrong, I ask. Lycus is shutting the door. He motions me to be quiet. Hand signs, be careful. He reaches into a bag at his hip, pulls out my belt, my coat. He hands them to me. 
I managed to wriggle myself into a sitting position. It hurts still, but the pain feels like it's fading. He must have seen me wince, puts his hand on my shoulder. I hold my coat tight, brush my thumb over the ward. Gamma's packet is still in my pocket, unopened. I look at Lycos properly for the first time since the fight. He looks older now. The lines in his face are deeper. His skin is rough. Stubble pokes out at odd angles in shades of black fading to pure white. He lost something saving me. A finger sign. What's wrong? Lycos begins speaking. He talks about the fight, talks about how he killed the fallen, tells me he's a guardian that he's hundreds of years old, that he had a ghost too once, that I'm a guardian now. They repaired the ghost. The ghost chose me. The ghost healed me. But with his hands and his fingers and his eyes, he tells me other things. Be careful. The ghost didn't choose you. It wanted me. I asked it to choose you. I don't need another ghost, but you. You have what it takes to be a guardian. The ghost knows it. I can feel your light, your strength. I'm not worthy of the traveller's light anymore. I abandoned the tower long ago. But I'll go back there with you. We'll go together. Don't be afraid. When he's finished, I ask a question. I feel much better. You knew my father? Lycus bows his head. Yes, he pauses. Waits. I don't say anything. He shuffles, looks at his feet. He's trying to decide what to tell me. I knew him, he says. He was a hunter, like you, like me. I took him out of the underground after he made his first kill. The same as you. Saw something in him. Light. He looks at me, then away. Taught him well. We killed for food, side by side. He was my apprentice. But he wasn't an apprentice for long. Then, when I thought he was ready, we hunted fallen. Must have killed hundreds of them, together. I trusted him like no one else I'd ever met. Ever. One night, I told him the truth about me. About the light and the traveller and the city. Told him I wanted him to become a guardian. Thought he could help me go back. Atone for my sins. He was my ticket home. But he didn't believe me. Or he couldn't. Wouldn't, maybe. I didn't talk to him about it again. He met your mother when we dropped off a few kills in her village a little after that. The villagers threw us all a little party. They fell in love. He stayed. Ran a little group of local hunters there for a while. Then, when you were a few years old, I asked him to come with us again. The fallen were getting too close to some of the bigger underground entrances, and I wanted to protect them. We pushed them back, but your dad... He pauses. He's been talking non-stop. Seems like this needed to come out. I feel tears prick at my eyes. See, Lycus is already crying. He saved me. Lycus looks at me. Eyes are sunken and wet. He looks older. This drag was on me. I didn't see the others. Your father took one out with his weapon, but another saw him before he saw it. He didn't stand a chance. They have these knives that... I couldn't save him. We were close, he says. His voice is quiet. When he was gone, I tried to fill the gap. Pilo came close. Then when you turned up, full of light, I knew. You'd take Losef's place. You're so like him. He reaches out, touches my arm. I feel that old, familiar warmth. The light. Will you come with me? Yes, I tell him. When? He smiles. Now. We're ready to go. We've been in the circus for a few days now. I rested for a day, but couldn't bear to sit and stare at the walls for any longer. Ghost talked to me. Told me about the city, the traveller. I had many questions. Ghost didn't have all the answers. It followed me around as I explored the circus with Pilo. We held hands. I smiled a lot. He's coming with us. Says that there's nothing here for him. He needs to protect me. Everything I've learned from Ghost tells me I'm probably going to be protecting him. But I don't mind. I don't want to stop protecting him. I don't want to leave him. 
we've talked to about home, about us, who we were, who we want to be, about the city, the traveller, about Lycus. We've been living in a few rooms set aside for hunters. I've slept in Pilo's bed for the last two nights. Lycus comes home late, after we're both asleep. I wake up, happy. Lycus took us both on a tour of the circus. It's one of the biggest towns in the underground. There are two entrances and miles of tunnels split up into houses, storerooms, shops and public spaces. There's even an inn. I tried cider. It's sweet and makes me cough. I like it. We saw a weaponsmith. He's been repairing and modifying our weapons. He's taken the fallen guns and used some of their technology in pistols for us. Janus 1010 helped him. He talked about it a lot. I didn't understand most of what he said. We've been getting everything together for our journey. Lycus says that it'll be long. We'll be travelling for months, mostly overground, but we'll have to head south first, cross a great bridge over a wide channel before turning east. We've got food and water, hunting tools and new clothes. My coat has been repaired by a kind woman. I've written messages that a young man called Hero will take to Mama and Gamma and Rico. In the letters, I tell them I love them and that I'm safe, that I'm happy. I've spent some time carving new wards, new signs into my gear. We've all got new armour, some new weapons, new clothes. I copied my father's ward into my clothes, made up some new ones of my own design. My weapons have power signs on them. I've even carved a thank sign into Ghost. I asked him first. He said I could, but he didn't sound too pleased. I've been thinking about what Lycus said, about spiritualism, how it's bullshit. I understand now, I think. Lycus has contacted other hunters. They arrived today and he met with them for a long time. Pilo and I wandered the circus, talked to people, to each other. Ghost follows me everywhere. Lycus has told us that he's going to give them orders and directions to follow when he's gone. Lycus has picked up Buras to lead them, but he's not been able to make it to the meeting. Ryman sent word with Seb that he's doing well, that they buried the others and burned the dead fallen. Seb is taking more messages back to the station. One of them will be a long one for Buras, that I've seen Lycus writing whenever he has a spare minute. It's been strange, being amongst people for a time. I'd not been a hunter long, but I'd gotten used to the quiet, to the solitude. Seeing the people here reminds me why I became a hunter. I think it will remind me why I became a guardian too. I don't know what will happen when we get to the city. What will they do with Pilo? Will I be able to see him? We don't talk about it. He holds me close at night and I feel his fear. I'm afraid too. We're alone in our fear, alone together. Honestly, I don't know if I'll ever really be ready. There are people waiting to wave us off. Janus and Keon, the weaponsmith, Seb and the other hunters, they've all come onto the surface. We're surrounded by tall buildings. There are no trees nearby, but grass has grown up through the thick tarmac floor. I can see a leafy canopy at the bottom one of the long streets. Lycus and Pilo shake everyone's hands. They're talking together in low voices. As they say goodbye, Pilo pulls Seb in for a hug. I hang back. I'm not sure what to do. Seb comes over. Got it working then? He points at the ghost. He must have seen it back in the station. I nod. Where are you going? He asks. To the last city, I tell him. Isn't that a myth? I shrug. He tuts and holds out his hand. I shake it. Good luck, he tells me. He smiles. I try to smile back. He turns and walks back to the other hunters. A breeze blows down the street, kicking up leaves and debris. I wrap my arms around myself, feel something hard dig into my elbow. Gamma's little parcel. I turn away from the crowd and open it out. Hear ghost idle buzz over my shoulder. What's that? He asks. My gamma gave it to me. When I left, it's wrapped tightly in soft leather. I stroke the covering. 
I don't know why, but I'm not sure I should open it. Open it, Ghost tells me. I hesitate. Somehow it feels as though opening will start something, or end something. I look over my shoulder. Pilo is talking to another hunter. They're smiling. His eyes are bright and he looks happy. This journey is going to be dangerous. I don't want to lose him. I turn over the parcel and pick at the thin cord, keeping it together. I peel away two layers of soft leather and drop the object into my hand. It's a slim disc of metal, bronze in colour, with a strange carving in the flat face. I flip it over. A green gem sits in the middle. A few shallow curves surround it. I can't look away. I've never seen anything like it before. Ghost flits down for a closer look. Where did you get this? He hisses. Stubby points twitching around nervously. From my gamma, she said it was my father's. I wonder where he got it from. Your father? Ghost scoots back, rocks forwards, comes very close, whispers. Hide it. Do you know what it is? I still have it in my hand. I hold it up to the little machine. Yes, I know, but you should put it away. Tell me, I demand. Not now. I start to protest, but Ghost lurches towards my face. Later. He hisses. Then karma. Later, I promise. Put it away, keep it close. Silently, I put this strange disc in my inside breast pocket. I keep hold of the leather and cord, too. Good, says Ghost. It begins flying away towards Lycus and the others. We'd better get going. I follow. Picking up my heavy pack and slinging it across my shoulders, our weapons are waiting for us by the underground entrance. As I approach, Lycus looks over at me. He smiles again. But there's something else in it. Not a happy smile. He's nervous. I know how he feels. Ready? Lycus asks. Pillar holds out his hand to me. I take Pillow's hand and nod. I can't think of anything more to say. Epilogue Humans probably hadn't set foot on the bridge for hundreds of years. It was remarkable that even after the pillaging of Europe, it still stood. One of the marvels of the Golden Age, the Channel Bridge was a masterpiece of engineering. Eight lanes crossed over 30 kilometres of water in a single, uninterrupted span. At its centre, the lanes crossed over in a swooping web of metal and concrete, swapping which side of the road the traffic would travel on, and between the lanes nestled a wide, covered avenue, lined with shops, galleries, restaurants, entertainment venues and parks. Tightened pillars on either shore anchored the thousands of impossible, strong, gossamer-thin suspension cables that held the mighty bridge aloft. It was wonderful. The ghosts had seen it all before, of course. They were making their way across the bridge, slow going at the best of times, but the fallen weren't keen on letting go of this excellent territory. The small group had been in three skirmishes already and were barely 12 kilometres in. The girl was already proving her worth, had three kills already, one a vandal. They camped out last night in a long abandoned store. Fortunately, animals had ventured onto the bridge too, so they made an easy kill. The parks had spilled over their carefully tended borders and covered the bridge in green. The ghost imagined roots poking out through the bottom of the bridge, searching for the water far, far below, heedless of its toxicity. The ghost had watched its charge all night. It spent every free picosecond weighing her up, appraising her, judging her. The old hunter had assured the ghost that she was worthy of the mantle of guardian, that she wouldn't disappoint, that she would serve the tower and the traveller. The ghost had merged with her light, so he knew the truth of some of the ancient human's words. She was certainly capable, but he was the prize the ghost had been seeking before the fallen had captured it. The ghost felt him as soon as it had been revived. The frame had done what it could for the ghost's body, but it was the light, a dazzling little moat that the hunter had wished into its soul, that had truly brought it back to what the ghost could only call life. It had drunk deeply of that light, had sensed the nature of the maker of it, had relished in the transfer of power. It wanted more. 
for all beings of light are greedy for it, but knew that it would have to wait, that poor Lycus had no more left to give. It had begged Lycus to let it bind itself to him. Even as the girl lay dying, the ghost had pleaded. Well, not pleaded, it had asked forcefully. It tried to make it clear that the hunter would be more use than the child ever would. The ghost had been sent out into the world for one purpose. Find agents that the ghost, the speaker, and so the traveller could bend to their will. Strong bodies, weak minds. Bursting with light and a desire to use it, lacking only a purpose. But the hunter had denied it. And far be it for a ghost to disobey a guardian. So it had healed the girl, had bound itself to her as it had to three other guardians before her. It would serve her until she had no further need of it, until her light was extinguished, as the ghost knew it would be. No matter. Then it would find a new master, a stronger master. Once they were bound, the ghost had asked the girl's name. The old hunter had told it. It rolled the name around in its mind, a strange name, ancient and strong. Lycus had bid the ghost to take care of her. Inside its shell, the ghost had smiled, and a shadow born of darkness had flitted through its consciousness. It followed now, as she carefully wound her way through the ruined buildings, following Lycus and the other human. There was evidence of fallen all around, their strange devices, tattered cloth hangings, old bones, filthy scavengers. A blackened spar of metal jutted out at an angle from the floor. Watch out, the ghost warned. Thanks, she stepped, lightly over the bar, looked back at the ghost, smiled. It's okay, my Ellie, the ghost said. I'll take care of you. A note from the author. When I set out to write this little story, I didn't envision it as being set in the world of destiny at all. However, as I wrote, and as I continued to play the game, it became more and more apparent that I was being influenced by the world that Bungie had created. As a result, I ultimately chose to refocus the story and have it take place in the same world. Unfortunately though, Bungie haven't yet released a comprehensive guide to the universe or its rules. We don't really know how most of it works. That means I've had to take some liberties and make some educated guesses to get my story to function within that world, without sacrificing depth and clarity. Oh, and while still trying to tell a good old adventure tale. Where possible, I've taken my cues and made some decisions based on the information that is available, either through in-game lore, the extensive collection of grimoire cards, the armory, and other reputable sources of information. But as with almost everything in this world, some things are better when we focus our imaginations on them. So, I hope you'll forgive one or two indulgences that might otherwise seem a little out of place while I spin my yarn. Respectfully, J.A. Perry Bruce.